Hello. Oh, wow. OK, that works. Um, thanks, Mark. This is, uh, it's awesome to be here. It's my first time at Sheffield, so I'm stoked. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, for those who, uh, who don't know me or don't have context for what I do, um, I basically am in charge of the live action virtual reality content that we make at Google. Uh, I am currently one of the only person, uh, people doing that at Google, but um, I got the chance to work with a lot of different creators. Some of you are here. Hi, thanks for coming. Um, and uh, for the past seven years, I actually uh, have been working with Google, making, uh, making a lot of different film content for a variety of reasons, uh, for, for commercials, for small documentaries, and it was everything from you know, Chrome and YouTube and search to like artificial intelligence and natural language understanding and quantum computing. And when I thought it couldn't get any nerdier, uh, a group of engineers gave me this, and uh, f uh, this is a uh, very early prototype of um, something called uh, a jump rig, and it's 16 GoPros in an array, um, marked with beautiful Sharpie uh, multiple times. Uh, so if one GoPro drives you insane, <laughs> 16 is pretty, pretty fun. Uh, and they're not synced, by the way. I feel like I'm getting to that point where I'm going like, to talk back to my, you know, just to like my friends and be like, I remember back in the day where I had to sync those manually, and it was because uh, it's changing pretty pretty quickly. And this is actually, so this is the rig that I, I suddenly like noticed. I was like, oh, okay, that's pretty weird. Um, and then this is one of the first things I saw, um, which, uh, to be very honest with you, is still one of my favorite things I've seen in VR. Uh, it's basically a bunch of the engineers in Seattle turning the camera on for the first time. Uh, and yeah, it's one of my favorites. And I knew as soon as I saw this, um, and, you know, they filmed a couple of things, and I was a bit like, okay, yeah, like the University of Washington isn't that exciting. But, um, but for some reason, you know, a cubicle space at Google was awesome. Um, and the unfortunate part of it, doing any presentation is that you're out there watching it on a screen, which is completely not the point of VR, but um, it's on YouTube, so if you want to go check it out, you can. Uh, so anyway, uh, this is how much I've, I've filmed. And aside from the porn industry, probably, um, this is the most stereoscopic live action uh, shot within the kind of the year that I've been doing this. Uh, my engineers like to give me a larger number, which is in frames. Um, and it's really just to say I've seen a lot of stuff. Um, and I uh, have allowed the, the medium to kind of emerge instead of kind of going into it. Like, as a filmmaker, I think, and I only have one chance to do this, that this needs to happen. It's been very much like, OK, I'm just going to film a bunch of stuff and see what emerges from this, what, what resonates the most, even if that makes me uncomfortable, even that, if that makes me rewire, or makes me rethink uh, the entirety of, of how I work. Um, so there are two things that became very, very clear to me. The first, um, oh, I'll go back. One second. Uh, cool transition is this frame. Um, and so as a filmmaker, we craft for this. This is like the center point of our medium. Um, we, you know, we study it. We um, have every intention for no one to turn away from this, right? But in VR, um, if you don't turn away from, from any point, you're kind of doing it wrong, right? Uh, so a frame as, as, a, as a construct is, is not the right visual approach. Um, and it was messing me up quite a bit for, for a number of reasons. Um, so what I had to do in order to sort of you know, rework what VR really was in, in my own head was to take something that um, is generally this um, and make it into something like this. And what that does is it, it allows for me to understand you know, VR as, a, as not so much about frames but uh, worlds um, and these worlds of experience that um, I can craft and build. Um, and the second part of this is also, uh, once you do have a world, someone does show up on it. Otherwise, there's no point, right? So every time someone puts on a headset, um, they basically become a visitor to that world. And then they have, um, you know, these, uh, the agency to, you know, move or, or look around or engage with that world. Um, and then afterwards, uh, they retain that. That becomes their experience. So uh, I lost my frame, and I lost my viewer. And so, uh, major crisis, because that's my title <laughs> at Google. So the ironic uh, thing has been most of the time that I've been talking to people, most of the things I've been doing is actually proving my title wrong. Because the filmmaking part isn't really the point of VR. Um, 
And you know, as I was going through this crisis, I was also talking to other folks as well in different mediums entirely, from gaming to theater. Um, anyone that was interested was trying to, to do this, and they're like, you know, we're kind of running into the same snags, but from a different, completely different uh, entry point. Um, so this got me thinking. Um, so here's what I think has been happening, right? So we go into an experience, we have it, we retain it, and uh, we want to validate that or express it to somebody else. And so what we do is we think back, we're like, okay, well, I had this experience, and then uh, we, um, we use whatever methods are at our disposal, right? We either speak or we write or we show photos or video, and we take from that experience, and we maybe take from other experiences we've had in the past, and we craft this little nugget of a thing. And then that person you know, engages with that. And that's medium, and that little nugget is story. Now here's what happens in VR. Most of that goes away, because we do this. So medium and story don't really have a stronghold as much as they did before, which is, you know, kind of weird. So um, where could those things land? And um, so if we think about what we do in VR, so we craft a world and we put a visitor in that world, um, that experience is then retained by uh, that, or sorry, the visitor retains that experience. Um, and then you know, the visitor wants to tell someone about it, and guess what happens? So story isn't directly in line with what I'm doing. Story happens after the fact. Um, and it's still there, but the, and the traditional medium is still kind of there, but it just kind of happens a little bit later. And so as a result, it's more about the experiences that that person has in the worlds that you create that can then lead to the story that they want to tell after the fact. Um, and the real craft here is this relationship. And the future of the quality of VR content comes from how well we can craft these experiences and how, how that engagement actually happens. Um, and that kind of exploration requires a very different language than what any other medium has provided because there's no, the medium just doesn't really exist in that relationship yet. Um, and although VR itself isn't a traditional medium, uh, we can still see, uh, the, use the strengths and the expectations of other mediums to, to use as a framework for evaluating what may work and what may not work uh, in, a, in a VR space, um, which is what I've been doing for the past year and a half, I guess, which feels like 20 years. Um, so uh, let's take something like editing. So again, editing, because it's, it's, you know, for a filmmaker, it's a framework, right? I mean, it's literally just frame to frame to frame, and there's nuance, but generally speaking, that's, that's how it works, right? But because there are worlds that we create, we can't think of premeditated frames as a way of crafting anything. I mean, that, what I see doesn't matter so much as what you are compelled to see in an experience. So we really need to think about the potential of, exp of experience, the entirety of experience, which is why um, thinking about it more world to world makes more sense. And there, you know, in, in, uh, when something new comes along, uh, and I think some of you have been experiencing this, well, we kind of need to come up with new terms for things. And this is uh, one of those terms, um, probabilistic experiential editing. Um, and it's really three parts. It's, it's evaluating or crafting uh, the experiential potential of a world. It's how a visitor will engage in that world and how, as the creator, I can respond to that. Um, so let's take something like uh, attention. Um, if you look at this, or if you're in a VR experience, it's generally just glacier, and then you, there's one singular human being that's walking and making a noise. Now, I can't be 100% sure, but I can make a pretty solid bet that that's where you're going to place your attention most of the time. Um, and if I can, if I can gauge that, and it's, if it's very clear that that's what's going to happen, I can then use that to my advantage. I can then uh, determine where your attention is likely to go, and then um, match that with somewhere uh, or something else in the following world that I want you to see. Um, I've been calling this matching on attention, which, you know, makes sense. Um, and it could just be something that I want a visitor to see. So if you're checking out the glacier guy, um, I then meet you with a character in the next world that would be interesting for you to see. And then you start engaging there. Or it could be a spatial thing, just for the comfortability of the viewer where um, I can orient the world a certain way, you're looking in one direction, and then I can reinforce that direction in the following world. And it's made editing in VR for me and for others I've been hearing, which is a good, good sign. I feel like I'm just sort of talking. I don't know if anyone's doing anything. But it's, uh, it, it's actually been working for folks. And it's, it's 
become a bit of a conversation. And much like editing was when I pre predetermined, you know, an in and out point, um, and because, you know, in VR we hope you at least move around a little bit, um, where you place your attention in the beginning and where you place it at the end shifts. So if I know, you know, you start there, you're going to go there, I can meet you here. And then if I know you're going to go here, I can meet you there. It becomes this really, uh, this kind of interesting way of, of unlocking the potential of the universe we create, all these worlds that we have. It gives it some sort of cohesion, which is really great. Um, and it doesn't matter, I mean, if you don't go down that path, it, our responsibility as creators is like, it's supposed to be okay. But if we do our jobs right and we craft from the ground up, like this is just an example of montage, but if I were to know, okay, I know the path that I want people to take, I know the conversation I want to take, from the ground up, prior to even filming, I can start building the, that universe up. Um, but it gets complicated super fast. This is a, a tram scene, and um, there's more than one point of interest. There's like four or five. Now, here are rocks, and it's utter chaos. I have absolutely no idea where you're looking. It could be that rock, it could be that rock, and depending on how much you like rocks, this could either be great or terrifying. Because for a lot of people, so many choices provide, uh, the chaos uh, actually makes you feel anxiety. But it could be a break. It could be like, oh, I don't have to look at anything. This is fine. And so that's when you start to really think about, okay, well, like, the f maybe it's like feeling or it's engagement. There's something else that's missing. It's not so much the what, it's the hows and the whys, right? Um, back, in, uh, back about a year ago, my first film, uh, my engineers and I made this lovely graph, and um, it's very technical. Uh, it's, uh, as you see on, in the uh, y-axis, it sounds awesome, sounds like shit, uh, looks like shit, looks awesome. Fuck, uh, fuck is this is the, the vortex of confusion, we've called it, because that's sort of like, I have no idea why I'm here in the first place. Uh, and I feel awesome, which is on that z-axis, which we determined was impact at the time. And at the time, horses was the, the stitch to beat. Um, and that was more to say that there, there's something very, uh, that goes much deeper than what we see and what we hear. Uh, you hear it all the time, people are like, ah, oh, I can take you to Machu Picchu. Great. Then what? Like, do I like Machu Picchu? Are there, are there other things in Machu Picchu that are going on? Like, once you're in a different spot, at one, if there's no substance, if there's nothing to feel, if there's no engagement with me, I have no reason to be there. I want to leave. Um, so it's a difference between something like meh and awesome, as cool as Machu Picchu might be. Um, and the, the kind of truth of this is that we don't really know what this means anymore. We don't experience things the way that we used to. We, we take photos, we check in, we tweet. Uh, I'm as guilty of it as the rest of you. Maybe some of you just don't, pragmatically just don't use technology, and that's, maybe that's great. Um, and what's interesting is that technology is sort of doing uh, the reverse now. It's asking us, uh, it's actually providing us a way in to remember what it's like to experience things. And that's why you see people put on a headset for the first time, and they have this experience, they're like, whoa, I've never, you know, that's so great. It's like, yeah, because you're there. And you have to just deal with being there. And that's all you have to do. There's no expectation other than just doing what you feel like doing. And that's, that's a remarkable thing uh, to have happen. Um, because then you start to think about, okay, now that I'm, I'm in this space, now that I, it's about engagement and how I feel, what are some of the things that seem to be really working? And things like identity. Things like having uh, you know, validation in the real world is something that we always strive for. We should always ha try to have validation in the virtual world too. What is my purpose there? What, what is my meaning for being there? Um, and it can be as simple as something like the height of the rig. I've seen so many things where the height of the rig is everywhere, and I've made the same mistake, where it's just like there's no rhyme or reason for it. We're not, you know, like we relate to people on certain levels. You can relate to the main character by keeping, you know, this is Tim. Uh, I could be Tim's height. And that means that I can relate to Tim. It just, it feels that way. It feels like, okay, I'm on the same level as Tim. I get it. Now, if I kept Tim's height in this shot, that would be a total power shift. If I'm supposed to be relating to a kid, and I'm the height of an adult, not unless, if I'm going for that, fine, but if I'm trying to relate to her, I should be the same height as her. Looking down on a kid versus looking at eye level at somebody is very different. And something like an orchestra. Um, you know, I, I, am I part of the orchestra? Am I a musician? 
And if so, why would I be standing up in the middle of the orchestra? I should be sort of where they're sitting, right? I should be able to see them as my, as my you know, comrades, as, my, as, my, uh, as the group that I'm a part of. And if I am standing, then I guess I'm the conductor, but then there's a conductor there already. So that doesn't really help, right? So it's all about understanding how the worlds and the way that we build worlds actually uh, uh, are a reflection of our identity as well. And we're constantly looking for that. Uh, relationships. So, uh, and it's, it's, it's interesting how, uh, something that we've also noticed is that if you, um, we, we throw you in, you know, generally in some of your experiences, you're thrown into an experience and you're expected to be friends and relate to everyone. I don't know any social situation where that has been fine. <laughs> you know, like we all slowly build relationships. Sometimes they're faster than others, but generally speaking, it's, it's a process. So in a virtual space, when we're meant to be with other people, that's something that could be a very powerful experience for someone. I build a relationship with a hero because originally they're far away, but then they come closer to me. It's not just, hi, you're, you're right here. It's this, you know, this depth that um, is earned. Um, something else that's really, really interesting, uh, I'm from a small town in Pennsylvania, uh, and what we do, you wouldn't notice no, that by looking at me, but uh, my, uh, something that we do uh, in, in farm country is uh, if you're outside, regardless of who comes by on, in any car, uh, you wave. It, it, that's it. There's no engagement. There's no like, hey, how are you? How are you doing? How's your family? It's literally just like a nod or like that. And that's just a simple expression of, of hi, I see you. Like, and it feels, it feels good. You feel like you're part of the community. You feel like you're present. You feel like you're there. Eye contact and an experience also can serve for that. A small wave. Like, even just a slight bit of acknowledgement. Presenting can sometimes feel a bit like, ugh, like, I don't really want to be here. But, um, but it's a slight understanding that, uh, that you're validated and being in a space is actually quite great. Um, and uh, something that we noticed in a... This is one of the last films that we did with the Montreal Canadiens, and I, I don't know, this is my first hockey game I've ever been to. Um, I actually used this, uh, that match on attention um, to introduce uh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you can actually use eye contact much in a way of, like, of bringing people actually into to a space and to direct their, their look. You can kind of, it's this interesting conversation you can have with the space. Um, and it could provide almost a portal into the next world as well. So from an editing standpoint, this is quite good. Um, I've also been saying it's a bit of, it's like a close-up too. It's like if you really want to connect with someone, a quick glance or, you know, a quick bit of eye contact really does wonders. And we love discovering things. Oh my gosh. Like we, you know, if it's a difference between someone handing me a penny, which is kind of weird, and if I find a penny. Finding a penny is awesome. Finding anything is awesome. It's like, this is mine. And it makes me feel like I own that. So experiences can be thought of as things that other people can own as well. Um, and something they can value. So what I tend to do is I don't present a whole lot. I kind of put things in people's peripherals. Uh, generally nothing that's like super important, but maybe kind of little Easter eggy things. Um, with the hope that if they catch it, they'll have something special that they can own for later. Uh, and so this is an example of that. Uh, so you, you seeing me falling on my butt is, is non, a non-issue for me. If you don't see it, that's probably better for me. But uh, I'm, I, if, you feel, if you see it and you watch it, you can see why I cut to black at the point that I do. Um, and it's just a way of, of, of engaging. Again, it's not, it's not the be-all, end-all, but it's just something nice to include. Uh, and rebellion. So one of the things that I actually learned from uh, from these guys over a, a company called Cyan, and they make a game. They make games called like Mist and Riven, and my favorite's Cosmic Ozma. I don't know if anyone else knows that game, but um, and I was asking them like kind of what they did in, in a virtual space, and they said, well, one of the guys, Robin, said, well, I, I do this. I find where someone's looking, and then I turn in the completely opposite direction. <laughs> Um, and you're sh it's shocking how much, or how, sorry, how little there is there. So I look in the back of most experiences. If you see me kind of turning my head, I try not, I try not to do it too much, but I, I'm curious. And it's remarkable how much space is in use, or how much that isn't even considered. People are going to do this. So how can we use this to craft better experiences? How can we do this, uh, use this to craft better VR uh, content? Um, so here's one of the things that we explored with Residence, which is another film we did. Um, and this is uh, Kennedy playing her violin, and that's the whole point. There's a young girl playing violin in her bedroom. But if you turn, you can see her parents watching her from the doorway. And I almost would argue that watching this and hearing, because you know, we're going to learn very soon, you know, spatial audio, ambisonics, that's a huge part of this format, right? 
um, I'm basically listening to Bad Violin Girl playing and, uh, and her parents uh, looking uh, at her that way. Um, oh my gosh, I'm running out of time. Okay, real quick. I'm gonna go quick. Energy. Um, the difference between my dad dancing, the difference between Google I.O. where everyone's staring at you and evaluating you, uh, and engineers that love you. Right? That's a huge difference. Um, and I was, this is really quick. Perception, we've evolved to see things the way that we think we need to, or sorry, the way that we as humans are meant to. Um, this is where artificial t intelligence comes in. Sorry, Mark, I promise this will be quick. Um, I'm not, uh, basically this is about a bunch of neural nets. This is like the worst time to rush through this, right? You're just gonna be like, what the fuck? Uh, so this is, a, this is a system understanding that this is a six. What they ended up doing was reverse engineering that um, and uh, having it come up with, its, uh, with a three. Now, when we come up with a three, we write a three and we don't think about it. But, but this is actually kind of how we think about threes when we write a three. And the system understands that. I mean, it's all it knows. And it's sort of these like weird revelations, these musical what's-its. Uh, Kasparov now does this thing now where he actually you know, he, had, he was beaten by a computer back in the day uh, and is now working with computers to, to, to make uh, grandmasters at chess better at their game. Um, so is this really this idea of, of working together with artificial intelligence and the potential for it from an artistic standpoint to create these really beautiful, unique experiences that we ourselves can't perceive because we're humans and we don't understand it. It's just not in our, it's not in our like, abilities. Um, and this is really cool, but I can't show you this, sorry. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so the three, okay, future of VR, three things. Uh, it's, it's basically this. First, how we, how we actually respond and engage with the real world. That's the visitor, understanding that. The second is concepts of engagement and perception that transcend human experiences. And the third is crafting experiences for a potential story or stories to come from those experiences. If this is done well, that experience that you make is gonna be fucking awesome. We're not there yet, but we're, I think there are a lot of things that are here at, at Sheffield that are the beginnings of that. Um, and we're getting closer uh, to that and away from the more literal stuff that um, honestly is surface and we need to get away from if we want to see this medium uh, be amazing and be what it needs to be. And this will always be relevant, but that comes later. And it's amazing that that's what happens from something as simple as being somewhere, right? Um, thank you for giving me an extra minute. <laughs> thank you so much. Is, is there anywhere we can actually see those incredible kind of machine dream AI uh, things? Yes, yeah, so those, yes. How would I, I don't know how, but we'll figure it out. Right. Um, I think uh, the, the, mu the music comes from a guy, uh, this guy Doug Douglas Eck, who uh, trained a system to come up with music. And it's, it's quite beautiful. It looks, it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's, pr it's pretty great.